Yes, I've got one shelf built, but still have some more to build, and I gotta get the VHS tapes for it too, but I'm sure we can do some decorating in the meanwhile. Let's see, we'll get Lloyd and Chloe up there in the, in the background. I think I've got a couple other things. How about, uh, let's see, my, my Batman bank, and uh, look, it's uh, my old uh, Game Shark. That can go right there. Okay, now I'm ready to talk about Michael Bay's Ambulance, which is pretty awesome. Here's a movie I thought looked decent from the trailers, but was a little concerned with how shaky the movie looked, even more so than usual for Michael Bay. But in the actual movie, nah, I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah, the camera's moving around a lot, but I could always tell what was going on. There was a flow to it. And this is a movie, kind of like Crank, that's just pure 100% tension from beginning to end. And the camera work adds to that. The editing's great. There's a lot of really inventive shots here, too. Michael Bay is having an absolute blast doing whatever the hell he wants with numerous drones shots that he can fly down buildings and move under cars as they're launched into the air and explode. In the film, Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II play brothers. Will is a war veteran who is strapped for cash, and Danny is alternate universe Tony Stark, who never became Iron Man, but instead robbed banks with the same sense of humor. The movie gets rolling fast. Will goes to Danny to ask for some money, and Danny's like, Okay, hang on a sec. Hey guys, come in here. Okay, we're gonna do this. The bank's got $36 million in cash from an armored car. Let's go. Like, whoa, this escalated quickly. Honestly, the whole movie could be called This Escalated Quickly. The robbery is going fine at first, till a cop comes in to ask out a bank teller, and then all hell breaks loose in a shootout of pure chaos. Danny and Will get away in an ambulance that contains a cop that was shot on their way out, and what ensues is just a pure adrenaline chase through L.A. I loved how I legit didn't know how this was going to play out. Part of that has to do with how wildly unpredictable Hall is in this. Sometimes he's cool, sometimes he's funny, then other times he's a deranged psychopath. He's amazing in this. Really everyone does a great job. I love seeing the side characters pop up too, like Keir O'Donnell as an FBI agent, and the great Garrett Dillahunt as the big dog-loving captain. It was somewhere around them having to perform a surgery via FaceTime at 60 miles an hour with people shooting at them that I knew I was really loving this movie. Michael Bay has some bad movies in his filmography, sure, but when he's on, he's freaking on. When you get R-rated Bay like this, you're gonna get a sweaty, magic hour, cigar-smoking, 90s action throwback, and that's what this is. He is great at what he does, in this case doing a movie about an ambulance wrecking havoc through Los Angeles. Of course Michael Bay can do that movie. This is like if he took over for director of Speed while on Speed. But I mean, sure, it's not a perfect movie. It is a Bay film, so you're gonna have some juvenile shit that pops up every now and then. He even starts referencing his own movies at one point. One cop starts quoting The Rock to the other cop, and with that I was like, okay, I'll give the movie that one. It was kind of a funny joke. But then it cuts back to them, and they're like, we gotta be like in Bad Boys. And I thought, okay, stop it. The conclusion kind of works for the most part. There are some pretty corny moments with it, but it didn't bother me that much. I still left the theater really satisfied. I'll give it an A-. minus. I didn't know until writing this review that the movie is actually a remake, and no, not of the Eric Roberts thriller The Ambulance about the killer who picks up injured people in his death ambulance and kills them. From the characters, to the editing, to the nonstop energy, this movie was a great time, and easily Michael Bay's best movie since Pain and Gain. But if it's some cinema snob stuff you want to see, the April Fool's Day episode is still in copyright limbo. 
which the companies are probably going to wait for the full 30 days to clear it. But you can see it over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. We also have early viewing for our Easter episode, Beaster Day, which is also waiting for copyright approval. No clue if it'll be cleared by Easter, but it is on Patreon where you can still see it. Just click on the link in the description. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.